Hi, Deb here and welcome to my craft room. I decided I fancied having a go at painting, rock painting. I've seen a few videos on YouTube and I thought I'd have a go. So I made the rock using a mould that I found on Amazon and Aquacast and um, yeah, some grey pigment. And what I'm using here is Liquitex Basics Gesso. Um, having watched the videos on YouTube, I found out that it's better to use the gesso as a base coat um, because it, it's not so expensive and it saves on the paints. It makes the colours brighter and you need, need to use less of the coloured paint if you use the gesso first. So that's what I did. Um, as you can see, I'm not the best at painting, but never mind. Underneath that coaster that the rock is sat on is a tiny little Lazy Susan, which is ideal for spinning your plate, your, your stone rock round. So here I am using pink pearlescent paint by Pebio. It's Pebio Pearl Pink. Putting on a coat of that trying hard not to go over the white line that I've painted already and then I'm using green which is Dochraft Artiste Pearl Frosted Mint you see me squirting it in there I really enjoyed doing this. I'm not very good at it, but I did really, really enjoy doing this and I am going to do more because I had so much fun doing it. So look out for more rock painting videos, people. Of course, if you don't want to see rock painting videos, let me know. Um, I, I will always mostly do resin, but sometimes you fancy doing something a little bit different and I fancy doing a bit of rock painting. I'm trying to blend in the line a bit there so it's not such a strict strong line and I'm just wiping my brush off and then I'm going to pour in the blue which is Dochraft Artiste um, Pearl Ice Blue. I absolutely love the pearlized colours they really do come out well. Unfortunately, with the pearl colours, the light is where my light is shining down on them. Where they're pearl, they're a bit shiny, so you can't really see the true colours. But you can in the picture at the end, you can really see the colours in that. blending in the lines a bit now. Um, here is the second coat. I'm doing a second coat on them all. You didn't need to see me doing that slowly. This is sped up a lot. As you know, I'm not that, clean, that quick at painting as you saw from the first bit. Clean the brush off now and do some blending and then the same with the green and the pink. And here I have some self-adhesive silk screens, this really nice feather. I thought I would cheat as I'm not very good at drawing, drawing. Um, the paint underneath has been drying for 24 hours. Um, I'm sticking this silk screen down firmly to make sure there's no edges that are stuck up. I need it all to be stuck really, really well so no paint goes underneath. And then I'm using a silvery glitter nail varnish, which I found in my room for some reason. And I'm going to paint that onto the silk screen. I know that's not the way you're supposed to use silk screens, but thought I'd give it a go. I'm 
I did make a huge um, beginner's error. Um, I'm sure that the nail varnish would have been a really good idea if I hadn't let it dry and put on a second coat. But um, I left it for half an hour or so to dry, put on a second coat as you will see in a minute and when I peeled it off it, it didn't peel off quite as well as I thought it would because the nail varnish had dried which then peeled you know when you flake a bit of nail varnish you peel it off when it's still not rock hard it peels a bit anyway it wasn't bad for the first attempt I was quite pleased with it but I have learned that if I'm using nail varnishes with um with silk screens don't let it dry peel it off as quickly as possible Well, whether you're using paint or nail varnish or anything, you shouldn't put a second coat on. You shouldn't You shouldn't let it dry. You should always peel it off as soon as possible. But you, you live and learn, don't you? You learn by your mistakes. And I have used silk screens on um, clay before, but never on painted surfaces. But I was quite pleased with it. I think it came out well. There was a few bits that weren't quite right, but. So now I'm going round it with a fine liner pen, um, just to make it stand out a bit. But this pen, I don't know, it didn't work very well. I persevered with it for a while and then I changed the pen because it just wasn't great. Yeah, that's it. I've had enough of that pen. Here comes a new one. This one that I'm using here is a Posca pen. Um, not sure what size it is, I'm afraid. I, I can't remember. I've got so many Posca pens, I can't remember what size it is. But I don't know if you can see it on the screen. No. This one worked so much better and it was so good. Oh, what's that say? 0.7 mil pen. That's handy to remember for next time. I think I'll write that down. I like to keep a note of, of the ingredients and things I've used because if I want to do to do it again then I know what I've used so I've got an, a card index that's full of little notes on things I've made what materials I've used how much of everything it just makes life easier if you're going to do it again doesn't it Drawing up the middle there is not great, but 
I'm learning. I'm learning. Hopefully I'll get better. I was quite proud of it though. And now I am using polyurethane gloss varnish to varnish over the top. I did put two coats on the front and the back. Um, as you can see, I stuck a sticker on the back with my name and that on it. Um, and I put two coats of polyurethane varnish on the front and the back so that it can withstand being outside. And here it is finished. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope to see you again soon. Please push like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.